Hey guys, it's Courtney. Today I'm going to be creating a card using the Easter Egg Stamp Set by Pretty Pink Posh. And I have a piece of Canton watercolor paper here, and this is cut down to five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm using my Misty here to stamp out all of my images, primarily because the watercolor paper is textured, so I know I'll have to stamp everything twice. So I lined up my first two Easter eggs here and I'm stamping this out with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3. Because this is a waterproof ink, I'm going to be using my Zig Clean Color markers for this card today. So once my first two Easter eggs were stamped out, I'm going to go ahead and mask these out. I'm using Simon Says Stamp Masking Paper because it's super tacky and I know I'll have to use these masks over and over for this card. I'll go ahead and line up my next two Easter eggs here and go ahead and stamp those out as well. Now you can see that I have a mask cut out for each and every one of the Easter eggs. I think there's five in the stamp set. And although they are the same shape and size and you could probably just cut the same one over and over or however many you need, I wanted to make sure that I had a mask for each and every one so that I could kind of keep track of which Easter egg I stamped where once they were masked out. I'm trying to kind of avoid putting the same Easter egg either right on top or right next to one another. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up because I'm pretty much doing the same thing for this entire panel. Just continuing to stamp each and every one of them twice, mask those out, and then stamp two additional ones or sometimes one depending on how many masks I have. It's a really super easy mask to cut out. I was just being a little bit lazy by only cutting out one for each one of these. I want this card to be completely full of these Easter eggs. So I'm going to go right up to the top of the card panel. So the entire thing will be covered with these Easter eggs. Now you can see that sometimes, well, I don't know whether you guys can see it on camera, but I am cleaning my stamp off or my stamps each, each and every time I stamp. But sometimes I don't do a great job and I have some inky fingers or Maybe the misty door is a little bit inky. So I do have a few little smudges on my card panel. I'm leaving them there and hopefully it won't be too noticeable once I do my watercoloring. If I use a sand eraser on watercolor paper and then I watercolor over it, you're going to kind of see where I use that sand eraser because the sand eraser will take off just like the coating of the paper, I guess, or the very top layer of the paper. And it's really going to show through with watercolor. If I was using Copic markers, it wouldn't be so noticeable. It would easily be able to be covered up. But with watercolor, not so much. You'd have, it would almost look like more smudges. So I'm just leaving little black smudges there. And for those particular areas, I'll, I'll use a little bit darker of a color so that it won't be all that noticeable. So I'm just finishing up here the top portion of the panel, masking those last two out, and then I'll stamp two more in these little tiny areas. You're not even going to be able to tell these are eggs in the, in the end, but I wanted to have a little bit there. I didn't want to have too much white space. And I'll go ahead and remove my masks, and then we're going to move on to the watercoloring. And I have a whole bunch of zig markers here and I'm only going to be using one color for each one of the sections of each of the eggs and I'm going to start off a little bit slower here for the first couple and then I'll kind of speed everything up. Now for this first egg I'm going to lay down this yellow and I'm going to lay down my color on either side of the egg. I want my highlight to be right in the center of each of the eggs because these would be rounder objects. So I'm going in with a damp paintbrush, and for this one I'm using a number two round brush. I'm dipping that in my water and kind of dabbing that off on my paper towel, and you'll see that I'm dabbing off like the base of the bristles and making sure that there's no drops on the brush itself or on the handle, I guess, because that can obviously drop onto your card panel and kind of spread everything around. I'm placing down my water in the middle of the egg and kind of working my way towards that color and letting that spread out. 
Next, I'll move on to this next egg and you can see this egg is not directly next to the first one. I'm kind of working every other one. I'll work on two at a time. While that first one dries, I'm working on the second one, just making sure that I'm not working on, on an image that's directly touching another image that is still wet because if any of the wet areas touch, your colors are going to blend. So I laid down my blue again on either side of the egg, concentrating my highlight being in the center. And I am trying my best to kind of go around these little leaves and these little berries or buds or whatever they're supposed to be in the center of the egg, just because I'm gonna use a different color and normally you wouldn't have a problem. You could probably remove the color, but it's just easier to try to go around them the best I can. And you can see with the darker color, like the blue, your highlight is a little bit more noticeable than it is with that yellow that we started off with. The lighter the color for anything, whether it be watercolor or Copics, it's going to not have as much contrast as if you use a darker color. So moving on to the little leaves on the first egg, I'm just gonna put a little bit of color in the center and again, going in with that damp paintbrush, starting off where there is no pigment and kind of working my way towards that pigment and letting that spread out to those areas. Wherever you have water, that's where your color is going to blend out to. So if it's not wet, it's not gonna blend any past that water. And I'm not using a whole ton of water here Next, I did have a little drop there. You can see that, I don't know whether you guys can see it, but one of I did have a little drop of water right there in the center. So I did kind of spread that out a little bit because it was pretty noticeable. I ended up moving my little, my jar of water to the other side to try to avoid that instead of reaching over my card panel each and every time. Did the same thing with the leaves on this one. And for these little stripes, I have a, I think it's called bright yellow, but it's more of an orangey yellow. And again, just concentrating my highlight being in the center. For this next egg, again, going to concentrate my highlight being in the center. So I'm just placing some color on either side, switching over to a number four brush, just because this is a larger area, putting down some water in the center of the egg and working my way towards that color. If you are using a super light color, you may have to work at it a little bit to get that color to spread. The darker the color, the more noticeable it's gonna be. So when you water down anything, it's gonna lighten it up. So if it's already a light color, you may have to work at it a little bit. For the striped Easter egg here, my highlight would still be in the center, but I don't have the whole egg on the card panel. So I'm just acting as if it's still there. So my highlight will be actually off to the right hand side. For the little polka dots, I'm using a darker pink and this ended up being a lot darker than I intended. So once I had everything spread out, I will go in with just a damp paintbrush without any pigment on it and just add a little bit of water to the center of the little polka dots and then just dab that up with a paper towel. Gonna do the same thing with the other little stripes, just making sure that those purple stripes are dry before I go in with an additional color because I don't want those colors to blend together. But concentrating that highlight being onto the right side, which would actually be the middle of the egg had we had the entire thing stamped out. So I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing for all of these eggs. And you can see that I have this sped up quite a bit. I think this is at like four times or something like that. And I'm pretty much using the same colors throughout the entire panel. And I am showing you guys the colors, but I'll also link all of the colors that I did use. I'm not doing any blending at all with multiple colors for each image. I'm just using my water to create my highlight and my shadow. For this particular one, I want my egg to appear white, so I'm using a gray marker just to add the shading on either side. Any white object is still gonna have some shading to it, so I didn't want this to be left stark white, so I just added a little bit of that gray. It's not too noticeable, but it would be noticeable if you didn't add any shading at all. It wouldn't appear to be a round object. So I'm gonna leave all of the coloring in the video, but like I said, have it sped up and I'll let you guys kind of see what I did and the color combinations that I used and things like that. 
But I did want to just mention and kind of chat with you guys about something I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm looking to organize a crop this summer. And I was looking to have it be held in Lake George, New York, which is about 45 minutes to an hour north of Albany. Now, I understand that not everybody is on the East Coast, so this is kind of a far ways to go for some people. But especially those on the East Coast, you may have heard of Lake George. There's actually a lot of stuff to do in Lake George. There, It's like a little village, and they kind of have it set up as if it's a boardwalk, but it's not on a boardwalk. <laughs> it's right on the street. So they have restaurants and shops and arcades and things like that. Of course, they have the lake where they have boat rides and dinner cruises and uh, they have outlet malls not too far away. They also have amusement parks. They have a Six Flags park. It's called Six Flags Great Escape and they have a water park. So there is a ton of stuff to do there on, you know, other than crafting. Um, but what I was looking to do is have it be held on a weekend. I'm probably looking at sometime either in August or September. And we would have probably a meet and greet at a restaurant or something on Friday night. And then we would start the crop on Saturday and Sunday. And I do have, I have spoken to a few people, a few YouTubers. I don't want to mention any names just because things can change and I don't want to make any promises that I can't keep. But um, we would have a couple of YouTubers that you guys probably do follow or that you've watched before there. We would be doing some classes and make and takes and things like that. We would have giveaways and silent auctions and games and prizes and and everything. So it would be a lot of fun. I did create a poll over on the community section in YouTube and as well as my Instagram stories and over on my Facebook just to try to get an idea of how many people would be interested in attending. So if you haven't seen that poll, that's fine. If you could just comment below and let me know if it would be something you'd be interested in. At this point, all I'm doing is trying to get a rough idea of how many people would be interested. I have not booked a place yet. I'm kind of looking at different meeting rooms and banquet halls and things like that. But it's it would be easier to know roughly how many people I'm going to be having. Um, I don't mind if it's not a whole ton of people. In fact, sometimes that's a little bit better. We get to know everybody and things like that. But just comment below if it would be something that you would be interested in. And I guess at that point, we'll kind of go from there as far as announcing where exactly it will be. I know that if it is in August, it is horse racing season here. I'm in upstate New York, so... Um, I'm close to Saratoga, if any of you guys have heard of Saratoga, so that's also a fun thing to do. Um, I think they pretty much only go in the month of August or maybe a little bit beyond that, either before or after. I don't really keep too much track of it, but I know Saratoga is only probably about 20 minutes away, 15 or 20 minutes away from Lake George. So that's also something fun that you guys can do. Um, outside of crafting. So like I said, just leave a comment below if it would be something that you'd be interested in and we'll kind of work out the details once I get a rough idea of how many people would like to come. So as you can see, I'm still coloring here. This actually took me, the coloring actually took me probably about an hour and a half and I took a little bit of a break just because I kind of got bored with it and especially with watercolor you kind of have to wait until everything is dry before moving on to the next step and sometimes I get a little impatient so as you can see I am just continuing to maintain that center highlight now here I'm working on it the egg that I considered to be the ugly egg out of the group. I did not like the way this one turned out at all. I did use that yellow for my base or the main part of the egg. And then once I added the other colors to it, I figured or I thought at least that the yellow was going to be light enough where I could add additional color on top of it and not really have to worry too much about them blending together and I was completely wrong. 
Um, everything that I probably could have done wrong with that particular egg, I did. So we'll fix it and work on hiding that later on. For the leaves, I didn't have too much of a problem because it's more of a greener, greenish blue color. So that blends nicely with yellow anyway. But when I added the pink, which is actually pretty dark in comparison to the other colors that I was using, it just wasn't looking bright. I went out of the lines a little bit with the water, so my color spread out of, out of the lines. So once that was dry, I did take a damp paintbrush just to clean up some of those areas that went out of the lines. I also added additional clean water on top of the flower to dab up some of the color so it wasn't so bright. And again, that didn't work out all that great either. So you'll see as I continue up the card panel or the last few eggs here, I kind of go back and forth with that particular one to try to fix that up. But every time I looked at it, it just got uglier and uglier in my mind. <laughs> so we'll figure out something else later. So moving on, again, using this really, really light greenish blue color for the outline of this particular leaf and or this particular egg and going directly over the leaves because I know I'm going to be using a darker color for the leaves. So I'm not going to have to really worry about them blending. For this polka dot one, this is where I started to get a little bit lazy. I am using the blue for the main part of the egg, again, concentrating that highlight being in the center. And I didn't feel like going around the polka dots, and I know that the blue is probably one of the darker colors that I used. So I didn't want to, or I wasn't able to use any other color to kind of go over that blue area, especially on either side of the egg where it's darker. So I ended up taking that same blue marker that I used for the rest of the egg and just colored in the little polka dots solid without doing any shading whatsoever. I was just feeling a little bit lazy at this point. I was ready to be done with the coloring and get this card put together. So you can see for that little stripe there, I added a little bit too much water with the yellow and my yellow spread pretty much evenly throughout that stripe. So I just took a little bit extra clean water in the center, dabbed that up with a paper towel and created that highlight again. Now also, if you make any mistakes and you need to remove any color, like if you go out of the lines or if it's spread a little bit too far, you can use the uh, just a damp paper or a damp paintbrush with no pigment on it, make sure it's clean, and then place some water down and dab it up with a paper towel. But you'll want to make sure that you're just dabbing up and down. That's it. Don't kind of rub the paper towel or you're just going to continue to spread that color to even more places that you don't want it to be. So just basically up and down as if you're kind of taking off the, the distress ink when you do your splatters. Up and down, that's it. So that's what I'm doing here is just fixing up some of the areas that I was kind of a little bit messy with. Still trying to fix this ugly egg and it just wasn't working. So it is what it is. We'll fix that with the sentiment. So everything is dry and I kind of played around and debated with where I was going to place my sentiment at first. When I first had the idea in my mind, I was just going to heat emboss my sentiment directly onto the card panel without doing any layers at all. But I wanted to cover up that ugly egg. So I ended up creating a sentiment strip. I'm going to take a scrap piece of black card stock here, treat this with my anti-static tool, stamp my sentiment with Versamark ink, and sprinkle on some white Hero Arts embossing powder. And then I will go ahead and heat set that, making sure that my heat gun is heated up prior to bringing that to the paper to try to avoid as much as possible any warping. And then I'll go ahead and cut this down into a strip. And I cut this down just a little bit larger than the sentiment itself. I didn't have too much black showing just because I didn't want to bring in too much black to the card. I wanted to keep this pretty pastel-y, if that's a word. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and put my sentiment off to the side and work on some of the details on my eggs. So at first, I'm going to bring in a white gel pen. 
And I'm gonna add some details, especially to the eggs. Well, actually first, I lie. I am going to adhere this to my card panel. I'm using my ATG gun, just because the paper is a little bit warped at this point, because we use so much water throughout the entire thing, that I find that it's easier to add your details when everything is laying flat, and it's gonna lay flat once you adhere that to your card base. So here is actually where I go in with my white gel pen and I'm just adding some details primarily to the eggs that are pretty much the same. So, I mean, I know I stamped each egg multiple times, but the ones that stand out are the striped and the polka dot ones. So I'm pretty much taking the striped ones and adding some details to those. So I'm adding some polka dots to pretty much the darkest color so that it shows up and some stripes to some of those areas just to kind of break it up and make it look like it's actually a different image. You can see that I was having an issue with my white gel pen for some reason. It just wasn't, it wasn't coming out, the, the ink wasn't coming out the way it should. So I keep rubbing that on my finger and this kind of heats up the tip of the white gel pen to make that ink kind of flow out a little bit easier. So once I had the little details done, I was going to add some reflections to things, but I just found that my white gel pen was not working with me all that great. So I left everything as is. I did add sparkle with a Nouveau Aqua Shimmer pen to pretty much everything. All the, the leaves, all the little polka dots, all the stripes. I added a whole lot of shimmer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my little sentiment strip down. I didn't pop this up. I ended up laying this flat with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to cover up that ugly egg. <laughs> and now you can no longer see those ugly pink flowers that I had created there. Last, I'm gonna take some glossy accents and add even more details. And I'm adding this to all of the little polka dots and the leaves. And I don't have a precision tip or a fine tip on my bottle and I don't really seem to have a problem. I pretty much outline whatever I'm filling in and then fill in the rest of it. It's kind of like decorating a sugar cookie with royal icing if you've ever done that. You kind of create that outline so that it doesn't spread anything past that and kind of just let it spread on its own. But that is it. That is the card for today. As always, I will leave all of the supplies I use listed in the description box. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day. Bye.